Welcome to Jatai Academy. I'm Russell Mays, Director of Content for Jatai. Today we're going to be doing a men's undercut, so I'm going to check and see if there's anything I need to pay attention to, like a cowlick or a hole or a lump or something that I need to pay attention to. I'm going to section off the top of the head from the bottom of the head and pin that out of the way, and then I'm going to run my clipper with a number two attachment up the back of the head. Now as I go up, I lay the clipper against the head where the head is flat, I follow the curvature of the head. Where the head starts to roll away from me, I pull the clipper up and out. So I don't follow the curvature of the head as it starts to go in. I counteract that with pulling the clipper away as the head starts to curve. This is going to give me a more pleasing shape. It's going to allow me to taper the sections, and it's not just going to look crude with everything being cut the same length underneath. I am going to taper this, and I'm going to go pretty close. So this is starting with the longer lengths, getting everything long at the top of the section, getting everything clean off underneath it, and then we'll start tapering it down. Now you notice as the hair gets longer at the top of the section, I'll lay my finger in the hair to make sure that that hair gets fed into the teeth of the clipper so it ends up cutting it. Once the hair gets too long, the clipper will push it away, so I have to push the hair into the clipper. Now there is some wrist motion that you have to get used to, but that's pretty simple. Make sure you give us a follow on all of our socials at Jatai Feather. Now the, the wrist flick is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. As I get to the top and the head starts to curve away, you'll notice I pull up and out, and that's by using my wrist to help that clipper head flick away from the, from the head so it leaves it longer at the top of the section. And then I'll just do this on both sides, and I'm going over it to make sure I get as smooth a blend as the head starts to curve at the top of the section as possible. The more work I can do here, the less work I'll have to do fine tuning it and cleaning that up with clipper over comb and then scissor over comb. Taking my time, being diligent, getting this as clean as I can. I always prefer to do any sort of clipper work with a guard on dry hair. On dry hair, you can see your shape develop exactly as it starts to develop, and you don't have to worry about it sticking to the clipper. It just gets cut and gets dropped off. Now we're going to go through and do a little clipper over comb just to make sure I have everything blended and tapered at the top of that section as I'd like. I want to make sure everything is clean. Now as I'm going through and doing clipper over comb, it's about getting into a rhythm. So I start low and then work my way up. And this is as much about seeing the end result after I trace the section as opposed to me looking for hair to cut. So I'm not actually looking to cut hair, I'm going through and looking to trace my previously cut guide, and as I trace it, it will gradually get a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter. Just from me trying to trace it, I can't get exactly on top of it. So that's how I'm going to start to really fine tune and clean up my tapering, especially at the top of the section through here. Being extra mindful, if he starts to move, I don't want to um, chase the hair. I want to just keep my rhythm going, and then as he stops moving, then I can go through and start to really fine-tune everything. Now, sometimes if they move too much, you know, they, they want to look at you when they're talking to you, or they're talking to their friend or something, or their phone rings, then you got to be really careful, especially if someone's excitable, because they can turn their head right into your clipper, and then you, you patch the poor boy. So here we're going to go down with the next guard size smaller. So this is a one and a half. Now as I'm working the one and a half, I'm going to go up the same way I started before, but I'm not going up as high as I did. The last one I went all the way up until the head curved and I ran out of hair. Here I'm going to go up not to where the head starts to curve, but a little bit below it, almost to it. And you'll notice that I will change the cleanliness of the cut with that little bar on the side. It moves the teeth closer and further away from the very edge of my cutting blade. So 
the further away it is, the larger and the longer the length is going to be and the softer the cut's going to be. The closer it is, the cleaner the cut and the shorter it's going to be. So at the bottom of the section, I'll start real clean. And then as I go up, I'll move that attachment out a little bit. I'll move that little lever out a little bit and it makes it just slightly longer and allows you to get a, a, a much smoother blend. Now I'm going to go through and do the same thing on both sides to make sure I get this as, as smooth as possible. Here I'm going to go down to my next size down and this is a one. So I'm not going up quite as high as I was before and this is getting lower and lower and lower. So each step that I lower the guard size, I'm going to go lower on the head. So each step lower. On the guard size, lower closer to the hairline that I go. And it's just stair stepping and using my little bar on the side to make the cleanliness shorter, cleaner, softer, longer. And that's how I end up going through and getting a nice clean fade is constantly adjusting and then using my wrist action to C-shape that clipper further away from the head as I get to my longer lengths where I want to blend. You'll see right there, I'm going longer and shorter by flicking that little bar on the side of the clipper that moves the head of the cutting blade closer to the tip and further away from the tip. Now I'll hold his head on sections like this that I have to be, I have to really maintain control to make sure he doesn't wiggle around and move so I know exactly where I'm at on the head because this is very, very precise surgery here. One small move and I end up going too high, I end up cutting it too short, I end up putting a line in it because I'm not C-shaping with my wrist like I should. And then I end up having to rework it and cut everything a lot shorter. I have to go back and recut it again. Here I am with the, the shorter piece. This is a one half blade and this is going to get it even cleaner and tighter and I don't go up as high as I did with the last one. Each step gets lower and lower and just being patient and adjusting my lever, C shaping my wrist and that's how you end up getting a nice clean line. Now here I have no guide at all. I'm just using the, the bare clipper head to go through and make sure everything's clean, make sure it's clean around the ear, get all that nice and smooth. Pull the ear out of the way, very good there. Now after I go through and do all this cleaning, I'll go through with my neck trimmers, which are even closer than these, and I'll go through and do the exact same thing. And I think our shape is looking up pretty good there nice and clean. Now sometimes the hair grows in different patterns especially around the nape of the neck and I may have to go through with the clipper at different angles to get that as smooth as I'd like. Now here's my neck trimmer. Everything's clean. Dusting him off before I go shampoo. Now I usually will cut clippers with dry hair, but whenever I use a razor, like my feather plie, I'm always going to cut that on wet hair. I want the blade to slide really smoothly across the hair. I want it to glide. I don't want it to catch. I want it to be as effortless as possible. I always use a new blade, make sure the hair is wet, optimal wetness, not dripping wet, but I, there is an optimal level of wetness that I'm striving for. I'll start in the center. I took a vertical pie section and cut that from long to short continuing the angle of graduation that I had started in the back with my tapering with the clipper. Now as I start to angle my sections, which I pie section and pivot from the center out, as I start to angle those sections into the side, that's where I'll start undercutting and disconnecting the top. Pivoting out from the center using my center section as a guide. Then I'll go through and cut shorter in the middle, longer towards the edges, and longer towards the front. So the only place that this haircut is really going to blend from the bottom to the top is that section right in the dead center of the crown. Everything else is, is longer, hence the undercut. It's undercut shorter, longer on top. 
and I'll use a, the same broad razor stroke so I can keep as minimal amount of weightness as possible, but the maximum amount of length. After I get my crown cut in, I'm going to go through and take a parallel section and then cut from the back going forward. That way I can go from short to long, and I want to leave that front pretty long, and I'm angling it down towards maybe his chin-ish, maybe his mouth, somewhere there. I want to make sure I leave that front really long and then comb it back and check see how it fits in take my next section using the underneath as my guide I'm going to go through and do exactly the same thing always cutting from the back going forward so I can keep the movement of my razor cut the same with every section and then the same on both sides I'll just go through elevate that off the peak curvature of the head cut my lengths longer in the front shorter in the back Make sure that's looking pretty good and just continue until I start to run out of hair. I think we've only got one more section after this. Maintaining the same proper razor stroke, making sure that I'm using a sharp blade. Now, as you'll see, I'll go through pretty quickly across this, and there are times where I actually touch my finger with the exposed razor blade. There's no guard on this. And it's not a matter of if the blade touches you, will it cut you? It's when it touches you and then moves up or down, not in or out. So as I apply my cut to the hair, if it touches my fingers, it's not that big a deal. It's when it touches and moves, that's the big deal, and that's when I really cut myself. So I want to be respectful of the blade, but I don't want to be afraid of it. After I've got that side done, we'll go through and do the exact same thing on the other side, cutting back to front. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and click that notification bell and we will notify you of future haircutting videos. So I'm keeping the same razor stroke that I was doing on the other side, which is going from back to front. So that way I can make both sides match in the way that the cut was applied to the hair. And then that will match with the movement. And I want to try to keep this razor stroke the same as the other side. That's where it's the hard part is making sure that I have the same razor stroke on both sides when I'm applying it exactly the opposite way. Make sure everything blends there. It's looking pretty good. Comb that back. Make sure everything is as clean as I want. After I finish this, I'm going to brush everything back, make sure everything's as smooth as I need it to be, and I don't have any pieces that are hanging out that's going to be a distraction. Looks pretty good. Now at this point, I'm going to use my Tokyo thinning scissors. These will allow me to go through and really fine tune the amount of weight that I have right there in the nape. Now, I graduated that whole back and while I want a good solid stacked shape, I don't want it to be too heavy and I want to make sure I have a good blend. So where it gets thick, I'm going to thin it out a little bit and I'll have a little more control by using the thinning scissor than I will using the razor. Now we're going to go through and blow his hair dry. I put a little texture spray onto it and I'm going to use my vent brush and blow dry everything nice and full. I'm going to use something we call the hook method where I put the vent brush in, I hook that forward to grasp some hair, I stretch that up and that way I can get it nice and full and I can pompadour this up real high in the front just like that. Boom, there you see it. I think this haircut is really perfect for his type of hair. It's still stylish and modern and looks great. If you haven't already, please check out the Jatai Academy. There is a tremendous amount of information on there covering barbering and hairdressing of all different types. Leave us a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.